Guess what, everybody? Emacs is now officially in the digital FPV game with the Baby Hawk 2 HD. We're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So if you're new to this channel and you like FPV stuff, I've been doing a lot more of it. I hope you'll hit subscribe and find out more about this and other great FPV quads. So about, I don't know, two or three months ago, I got a call from Emacs and they wanted me to check this out, the Baby Hawk 2 HD. Uh, and I have to say, I've had so much fun flying this thing. Now, some other FPV systems have come out recently, but I have not neglected my time flying this because it is so much fun to fly. And so here it is. This is the Baby Hawk 2 HD. Now, a couple of things about it. First of all, it uses the Cadex Vista transmitter instead of a full-size air unit, and it is compatible with uh, DJI goggles, both V1 and V2 of the goggles. It has a Nebula Cadex camera on the front, which is an HD camera. It's lightweight, high visibility, very good-looking camera for something this small. And the overall weight of this thing with the battery, which is the recommended battery is the 850 milliamp uh, Emax battery or any other 850 milliamp battery of this size. I know there's several people that make them, but this is a good one uh, with the XT30 connector on it. The overall weight of this thing is 242 grams. So it's under that 250 gram mark as a little FPV quad. So this quad has the Eco 1404 3700 KV motors and features the brand new Avon 3.5 inch props, which are tri-blade and just look awesome and are designed for a little bit heavier quad of this size. So it's carrying a Vista unit, it's carrying the digital FPV system, it can carry a uh, action camera. Right now I've got a mount, um, a TPU mount for the um, Insta360 Go on it. I've put it on there sort of semi-permanently because I use it a lot with the Insta360 Go, so that's why I didn't take it off right now but all of that does not slow this thing down at all. These motors and these propellers together, along with the entire design of the frame, make this thing a real ripper. Very agile, very fun to fly, not very loud at all, and small enough that you can fly it even in your own backyard, which I've done a few times. It has an all-in-one F4 board with 25 amp ESCs. It has uh, the Nebula Pro HD camera, but it's a very lightweight camera. And the frame is a 4.2 millimeter carbon fiber frame, which gives you a great amount of durability, but is still pretty lightweight. With this thing, using the 850 milliamp battery, uh, forest battery, you can get eight minutes of cruising time and four minutes of racing slash freestyle time. I found the flight time on this to be pretty decent for a quad with this much power. It comes already tuned with two different profiles, one profile for flying with an action camera and one profile for flying without an action camera. So you can go into beta flight and switch between those two profiles if you, if you want to experience uh, a different profile setup to carry that extra weight. Personally, I found that I can't feel much difference because I'm using the um, Insta360 Go, which is super lightweight. I think it's 20 grams, um, maybe 22 with the TPU mount. I'd say my only real complaint about this quad, and this is really true of almost all of Emax's uh, racing quads, like their uh, Tiny Hawk Freestyle, et cetera, is the cable management is a little rough because there's very, very little tolerance from these propellers 
over to the frame. So you have to use zip ties to kind of keep everything tightened down. I've added some little red ones here, you can see. Okay, so what we're having is a problem right now where this prop is hitting this metal buckle, or actually it's plastic buckle for the um, strap that I've got the Insta360 connected to. So I'm gonna put this zip tie around like so, right here. And then what I'm gonna do is try to basically tighten that buck or tighten that strap down so that it's um, just sucked in a little bit. It's kind of like a belt. It's just gonna keep that strap. There we go. Yeah, now look at that. Can you see? I don't know if you can tell how much that is is now pulled in. But see it's sucked in on both sides, giving me a lot more clearance. And now I just need to cut off the end of this. There we go. All right, bada boom, bada bing, let's try it again. But the bottom line with this thing is it's just fun to fly. I have been flying the DJI FPV system recently, the new drone that came out, and it's also a lot of fun, but they're really two different experiences. This thing is quiet, it's very lightweight, it's extremely agile, you can fly it in smaller spaces, you can get great range and great speed with it, but you're not flying something that feels like it's uh, very heavy and needs to be in a big open area. You can explore parks with this thing, you can fly around your backyard with this thing. I probably wouldn't try to fly it inside unless you were really confident about it. But overall, the flight experience with this is just a blast because it is very agile, it is very smooth, it is very quiet, it responds instantly to any input that you give it. I just can't say enough good things about how much this thing uh, has kind of taught me to be a better FPV pilot because of how responsive it is. I don't feel like it's sluggish in any way, shape, or form. It is just an agile little monster, and it's been pretty durable. I have hit this thing on quite a few uh, metal objects. I've run it into trees, I've run it into tree branches, and it's held up just fine. <laughs> That looked epic. The whole thing is pretty easy to take apart. It's got a bunch of screws in the bottom, and I do recommend, if you're flying one of these uh, extensively, to go through every so often with a little Allen key and just make sure everything's tight. Otherwise, screws will start dropping out of it due to vibration and stuff like that. One other thing that I think is pretty cool, and this has worked out really well with the uh, TPU mount I have up here, is if you are flying it this way, and you have this um, Insta360 Go mount on it, you can actually set the battery right in here, like this, and it fits perfectly in that slot between the TPU mount and the antenna here in the back. The antenna almost kind of helps hold it in place, which I've found to be really useful. It does have also these little claws that I think are really cool for putting the battery strap in. So instead of having to thread the battery strap all the way through, you can put it, put it in these little claws and it's really easy to take it out if you want to. See, I just took that one out right there and put it right back in to tighten it down. There's a little bit of rubber that comes with it to put on the top plate here so that you can have a little extra grip for the battery. But I haven't really had any problem with the battery popping out. Um, once you get the, the uh, Velcro strap cinched down pretty well, it, it does just fine. It will fly with different um, 4S batteries. You can put a 450 on it, which is a little lighter weight, uh, or you can go up to probably a little bit heavier, like a thousand milliamp hour. But this 850 is a sweet spot according to Emacs, and I found it to be very true. I think the goal Emacs had with this was to give you the five inch quad flying experience on a smaller quad. And they've done a great job with this. When you do fly a five inch quad, you really feel that control that comes with a little bit more space and a little bit more power. 
this gives you that same control and really feels like you're flying a bigger quad. Um, again, I really enjoy flying this. I have been able to uh, put it through some really tight gaps because it is small. The one thing you want to remember is if you have the uh, Go mounted on the top or an action cam mounted on the top, that you have a little higher profile. So if you're trying to go through something, don't forget, because I've hit this on a lot of things. For a first foray into digital FPV, I feel like Emacs did a fantastic job with this little guy. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of what they come out with in a small form factor so you can enjoy flying it in your backyard or flying even in your house when they come out with something like uh, their Tiny Hawk series in a digital form. So that's really it. If you're interested in finding out more, getting pricing, or buying one, there's a link below to Emacs's website with all the information about this brand new quad. Uh, I think it will be available very, very soon, and they'll be taking orders very soon. If you're new to FPV, I think this is a really great place to start. A 4S quad with the DJI digital system just can't be beat. It's so much fun. It's what really hooked me on FPV about a year and a half ago. I had been flying some analog before, but not very seriously. Hadn't gone out and flown that much. Last year, I got a, a 4S uh, GEP RC quad, actually, the Rocket, and went out and flew it 10 days in a row just to see if I could get better. 10 batteries a day for 10 days in a row, and I got a whole lot better at flying it. So I'd love to hear what you think about these smaller digital FPV systems. Uh, do you think that smaller is more fun? Do you think that smaller is better? Uh, or are you more of the big success kind of person? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you want to know more about FPV, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.